All right, and we're live. Happy Tuesday, happy live stream. Uh, if you are watching this on replay, just a reminder, you can skip ahead like two or three minutes and get everything set up. I'm going to, or get to the interview rather. I'm going to get everything set up and make sure we're going live on Instagram as well. And here we go. So just a reminder that if you have comments, you can drop them in the comment section at any point and we will read them off and answer them as we go. All right, let's see. What else do I have to do here? I think that's it. So we'll give everyone a chance to get set up. Let me jump in here and then we'll get started. All right. So thank you uh, to all those who are jumping in here. Um, at any point, just a reminder, you can jump throw some questions in the chat at any point if you have for Tom and we will answer them. And yeah, welcome. All right, here we go. Hello and welcome to the Bellwether Ritual live stream where we discuss music, the local Lehigh Valley scene and beyond, bands, social media, and more. Today is Tuesday, April 16th. My name is Mike and I am the guitarist and vocalist of Bellwether Ritual. Hope you had a great week. Our next show is coming up on Saturday, April 20th at Curry Donut in Wilkes-Barre and we're playing with Goliath and Beer and Pretzels. What a lineup. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you're in the area, please come out and um, support. And if you need a ride to the show, you can always hit us up, just DM us and we will get you up there with us. And just a reminder to please like and subscribe if you enjoy what we do here. All right, tonight our guest is Tom of Fictional Name, Raid and Ice House Punk and DIY Collective. Fictional Name is an introspective indie rock band, which he plays guitar and sings. Uh, also, Josh Burke, a alumni of the show, also plays in. And Raid is a post-punk noise rock band in which he plays guitar. And the Ice House Collective Showcase, uh, I'm sorry, the Ice House Collective uh, Punk DIY Collective showcases live performances from local and regional bands. It's an awesome venue. He's also lived in Canada, the US, France, and Turkey. We'll talk about all that and more. Tom, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me, Mike. Super oh. excited and honored to uh, have been asked to uh, come and chat with you today. Of course. Uh, long overdue, I feel like. I yeah. forgot to tell you. Usually what I say is, is there anything you'd like to plug right off the top? I know you got some shows coming up, which we will definitely be at, because uh, at least one that I know of. Uh, yeah. Just... Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Raid's playing a few shows. We got uh, this also this Saturday. So if you're not going to the Curry Donuts, you can come to Emmaus King Coffee. We're going to open oh, up yeah. for, uh, Wipes, uh, who's playing right. the show, and, and our friends in Trickery as well. And then uh, later in uh, in May, we're going to do a show at Muhlenberg with a couple of uh, bands. One's from Brooklyn called Pyrex. Uh, that we, uh, are I big saw fans. that. Yeah. And then our uh, drummer's other band, Ailments, can also uh, help out with that one too. And then um, and then Raid's going to return to the Ice House uh, also at the end of April along with uh, Purple Lung and Iridescence. Purple Lung's from Wilkes-Barre Wilkes too. We played with them at the Curry Donuts, I guess, a year or two ago now, I think. Yeah. Uh, and then our friends Iridescence also join us too. That's on April 26th. And then our other Ice House show, I think you had the uh, one uh, uh, a guest last week or a couple weeks ago from one of the bands. I think it was, was it Ray from Concourse? I think you were chatting with. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So they're joining uh, up at the Ice House on the May 24th along with Sun God, Nidarian, and Time Bean. So that'll be a really good one. And then Fictional Names playing the, uh, uh, we always play really fun shows, really interesting shows. We're playing. <laughs> and this one is a 5K rock and run at the Coca Cola Park on May 11th. So we will, uh, if you want to like, you know, sign up for the 5k and hear us for three seconds, you know, you can, <laughs> you can be or, part of or you can I, take a break like me and I probably wouldn't make it the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, I think it, it benefits like foster families and like adoption center. So it's for a good cause. And I think we have like earmarked a, a summer date too, with, uh, another North Center live summer show at Elmwood park for July 19th. And then also I've been like, I wouldn't like, I didn't want to consider myself a booking person per se, but we, um, I hosted a show at Muhlenberg like a year or two ago, like, like, you know, towards the tail end of like the pandemic with one of my like um, favorite artists I've listened to a long time. His name's David Dondero, like an anti-folk kind of like singer. And he like posted that he was looking for like tour dates again. So I like reached out to him and 
uh, worked with um, Allison Lay over at the uh, Escondalo and other side to book a show for him, along with my friend Alex and Sailcloth. So that's um, going to be Wednesday, May 10th at the other side at um, and, and slash Escondalo on 4th Street, Bethlehem. So excited about that one, too. So I think those are all the things that we have, that I have coming up. Awesome. Those are so many good lineups, too. Mm -hmm. Solid all the way through. So uh, great. And two, uh, you were talking about fictional name and like kind of out of the way um, venues that you played. We caught you at a graveyard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember uh, that. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty wild. It was actually the um, Easton uh, Cemetery, which is a uh, walkable distance for me. So I <laughs> just mm. went down there and um, yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, that was a fun one. Very unusual, yeah. Uh, let's see, Bryrex, thank you for joining. Sand Donut, thank you for joining on Instagram. I know those people. That's Brian from Fictional Name. Yeah, yeah. And Jess from Time Being, thanks for coming on. Yeah. Um, yeah, Bryrex has always been uh, someone who's jumped in here. and, and uh, mm. Really good guitar player. Yeah, yeah. it would have been great with that. So thank you very much for the support. We appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I know some of these answers already, but uh, the people listening might not. Um, usually, what I like to start off with is um, how how are, are you from the valley, and if not, how did you get here? Yeah, so I'm pretty much from the Lehigh Valley. Um, but I mean, I was um, my family and I immigrated from Canada when I was like in second or third grade. So mm -hmm. we moved to Nazareth, Pennsylvania. And that's kind of where I like finished my schooling years. So I'm pretty much considered Lehigh Valley, like my, my hometown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, I would say so. And mm -hmm. um, how much of a, like, that's a pretty impressionable age. Like how, how was that a, a transition for you? Yeah, I don't know. I guess, you know, I think about it a lot. I, you know, cause it was like kind of a big, I mean, I guess any move, like when you're younger mm -hmm. is kind of big big thing because it's like yeah you're moving schools and leaving your friends behind and stuff like that i'm sure a lot of folks have had that experience and some have had like a lot of those experiences especially if they're like in military families or something mm -hmm. but for me i don't know it was like um yeah i don't know leaving like a lot of like you know extended relatives behind and kind of like starting a, like a new kind of adventure with like you know just like trying to connect with folks in this area pretty much and um yeah, I don't, know. Was, I don't know. I guess it was kind of difficult as a child, but we would like visit Canada a bunch. And then I ended up going back like in later years to like study like um, at, in the university, like for a year or two. I lived with my brother who like stayed there. Oh, wow. And, um, we'd go back or I'd, I went back and lived with him for like a summer and did like a program. And he lives in Vancouver now. Mm -hmm. And I did like a French program in, in Quebec one, one summer as well. It's like a Canadian oh, cool. brand. So, and uh so I always felt like, you know, eventually I might go back, but I haven't like fully gone back. So, you know, um, it's been a few years. I haven't been back since before the pandemic when we visited um, my brother and, and his, his, his wife and also uh, my partners. Uh, her sister lives out in uh, Seattle. So we visited her like a, one, a year or two before the pandemic. So, but, um, you know, at the time, I guess, you know, the biggest difference as, as a child moving somewhere is like, you know, I don't know, not getting like the same kinds of like cereals that you're not used to. <laughs> it's like slightly different, you know, so it's yeah. like uh, Cocoa Pebbles in Canada were like, you know, round, but here they were like, you know, chocolate cornflakes. So like, <laughs> what is know. this madness? Yeah. yeah. Also like in the, I don't know, I was in grade two and our grade three, I remember. And like in Canada, you had like a lot of like recess time. So you'd have like, you know, an hour before classes start, maybe like an hour at lunch and maybe like, half hour in the afternoon or something. It just felt like we were always kind of like taking advantage of getting outdoors, especially when the weather was nice. But like when I moved here as like, you know, elementary school, it was like, all right, you, everyone has to do this, 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 and this, and then you can go out for 10 minutes. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and no one ever could do all those things. It was like a lot, it was a high, it was a high stakes, high, high bar to meet. So there's like a lot of, I remember the class or classes being a lot more stricter in that case, but I don't know. Yeah. Was it a, just really quickly, Angel has a, a comment here. She said that was crazy cool at the graveyard. Yeah. It was, oh, thank you. Interesting um, venue for sure. Uh, was it something that you looked forward to or was it like, were you kind of like scared? Um, yeah, I, I think that would kind of be overwhelming for me at that age. Yeah. Wow. You have the, you have the hard hitting questions here, my guys. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't thought about this in years. I mean, like, yeah, I, I didn't want to move at all, actually. I and that's a big move. move. Yeah. 
no, I don't want to move. Yeah. All right. Well, um, let's talk about music then. Um, was there like uh, someone in your family or something on the radio? What was the first thing that kind of got you into music or like you kind of realized like, oh, this is really cool and something I'm interested in? Yeah. Well, I have three older brothers, so I'm the youngest of four kids. Okay. So, you know, it's kind of like growing up and like having... I don't know, influence of like their secondhand like cassette tapes like passed down. So I just remember listening to like the Beatles and Nirvana and like Halloween, this 80s power, like power of metal band and Alice Cooper. And I don't know, just all these different things that they were listening to. I would eventually listen to like when they were done with it Yeah. and just being like, yeah, like super inspired and like, I don't know, kind of like enjoying a lot of this different, I don't know, heavier music. And um but I didn't really start playing music until later, probably almost high school time, I guess. But I always like mm -hmm. wanted to like play music and you know really enjoyed it. So I don't think it was until like maybe I was in grade eight or grade nine that like I started playing guitar because um, my friend uh, at the time who'd played guitar for like a few years, he'd like moved to the area and was like really really good guitar player, and he like you know, it was also really like handy with like making stuff. And he made like a guitar out of like this two by four piece of wood and was like, you know, done, I guess, tinkering with it. So he let me have it. So I was like playing with this like two by four that had strings on it somehow with like a bridge and tuners and everything. And wow, I guess at that point, my parents were like, okay, maybe, uh, maybe he wants to play guitar or something. So my dad like found a, a like a used guitar in the thrift store and we like fixed it up together and he like made a bridge for it. And like, you know, and, um, yeah, and that was like my first like real guitar. It was like an old, um, I was like, uh, uh, I forget the name. It, was, it wasn't Univox, but it was like, well, like a really old like Japanese like Sears guitar like brand. Mm -hmm. So I, I used that for a while. And then I just started like, you know, just listening to records and playing with my friends. And we started a band in high school. And yeah, and that was really cool to do. And like we had a band at that point, which was like, the, I guess the early 2000s. I don't know, 2000 one to 2003 i guess you know mm -hmm. i graduated from nazareth in 2004 and um yeah so that was like the sort of entryway of just like you know listening to and playing with other people too like it was really yeah. fun to like play with other people and like especially people that are better than you that was always mm -hmm. intimidating but then like you know you kind of would pick things up here and there as you like you know kind of jammed with them or worked on songs with them. So I was lucky to have some friends in high school that were like that. You know, we formed a band. Our first band was called True. And we played like a bunch of shows around that time, like places like um, where there was a venue out in Scioto called The Underworld that did a lot of shows. And we would play there. And uh, my brother's girlfriend, now sister-in-law, um, she worked at the YMCA. We used to play there a bunch in Nazareth. And yeah, just basically wherever we could find a show. It's like young kids, it was hard to like figure out where to play. We'd play in like our guitar player's backyard. I think that was our first show. <laughs> so it was just like, you know, <laughs> yeah. being really inventive and like, you know, creative of like, you know, trying to, you know, figure out how to do this like live music thing after like, you know, playing in basements and garages, trying to, you know, figure out these songs that we're trying to write and make, make sound like halfway decent to us at least. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of how it started, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, very cool. I just really want to quickly want to shout out um, M Tamora seven ninety. Thank you for joining. Bryrex says, "Ah, shucks." Um, yeah, so we want to just say thank you again for always jumping mm. in here. And one Bulliman, thank you for joining. I'm sorry if I butcher your handles. I need glasses. Mm. Um, M Tamora, that's my partner in crime. Oh, cool. <laughs> well, welcome, and thank you for jumping in. Uh, let's see here. Um, you hit on a whole bunch of stuff right there. Um, so I kind of had a similar experience where I had a friend who brought uh, a like kick guitar in and they built it. Him and his other friend built it. He came in and, and showed me a song right away and was like, oh my God, I know that song. And then he showed me how to play it. And I was like, holy cow, I could do this. Was that something similar that you had someone your age who can do that and then Totally. Yeah, I remember uh, my friend Jason, he played, he started playing bass and guitar before me and he learned, I think it was Sunshine of Your Love. Mm. Like, just like a simple riff. And yeah, it was like, you know, showed me that. I was like, wow, you can do that. And he showed me, it's like, I can do that. Like, wow, that's really cool. And uh, I think that's, yeah, totally. 
yeah, it's, it's crazy when um, someone else uh, you see like you see it be attainable and it's like oh i could definitely do that and then you kind of that's how i got like kind of started and hooked on it yeah um, and i love that you played out like was it kind of right away you're like looking to book shows pretty much right off the bat or maybe yeah i think i played a show before i ever actually saw a show to be honest it's oh really that's real cool. show yeah i mean like i think the idea was there because like yeah, we had a friend, uh, our, our, our other guitar player started the band with us, like his, you know, family and was like cool with us playing in the backyard. So we just took advantage of that. I think that was like the first thing we did. And then we just, you know, try to figure out other shows along the way, um, you know, here and there where we could. Yeah. So that first show, were you like, uh, do you have any stage fright or was it something you're looking forward to? Uh, I think I always have stage fright, even now. <laughs> Same. That's what I was going to go with my next question. Yeah. That hasn't and, gone away. But, um, you know, I think, yeah, at, at that time, it was like, you know, I didn't know what to really expect. Now, I guess I have like a little bit more of like, an expectation. But yeah, there's definitely stage fright for sure. Yeah. And then how do you, um, like, how do you try to um, deal with that? Like, is there certain things you try to do or? Um. I don't know. I think it's just like if you practice a good amount, like that helps because, you know, I think, you know, when you kind of run through stuff that kind of like gives you, I don't know, the, I don't know, the muscle memory to fall back on. Like that's, yeah. that's key. Um, yeah. And I, I don't know if, uh, what else did, um, you know, I think it's something that's like, you know, probably individual for everybody. But, you know, for me, I think I just kind of like, try to just think about what it's gonna be like right afterwards and just kind of like you know <laughs> yeah. you know this isn't gonna last forever and yeah. just think about like that you know this is this is the next there's 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 things after this um you know and uh and um but yeah i don't know it's it comes and goes i guess depending on like what like the circumstances are how i'm feeling at the time mm -hmm. i don't know coming on this is kind of like being on a show because it's like i've never done an interview where i'm talking yeah. about with someone with like live live stream not even not even a podcast that's edited later it's like oh this is it so yep and that's one of the, yeah uh that's one of the reasons we do it because i don't feel like going back and editing <laughs> yeah, I, don't blame you. I don't have the time to do that so it's just kind of like let's just put it out there we can always clip it later yeah. uh, that's that's a great point and i i i always like to ask that question because i still struggle with it all the time too and i get i can get like real self-conscious in my head and just interesting to hear um if, you know what people yeah. ultimately yeah I feel, I feel like you're always going to be your worst critic and most people aren't mm -hmm. even going to realize like if something goes wrong or if you make a mistake at all it's just kind of water under the bridge so yeah for sure that's some of the things that help me get through anyway yeah those are good uh, points. yeah so how did your current bands start that or i guess were you in like a whole bunch of bands um from shrew to fictional name or was it kind of like um yeah um i wouldn't say a lot of bands i think i like, sure it was like my main first band that was like high school years we had like you know um me and our bass player were like the the keith people it's mm -hmm. uh my friend jason and you know we had a second guitar player slash singer too for a while and a few different drummers so that was like high school years and then i think after that um I don't know. I didn't have another band until maybe like, I want to say like later in the late, later 2006, 2007, I made a, a friend in college, his name's Tim, who played in a bunch of bands in Lehigh Valley too, or at least one band. And um, we were working like on making like, I don't know, some experimental like indie folk songs. We called that project Holiday of Jambus. And like, I don't know, I was always, I'm always writing songs or thinking about songs or thinking mm -hmm. about music. Mm -hmm. So it's never really like leaving like, you know, far from me. So it's always just kind of thinking about like organizing this into like a project or I don't know, a, a thing to do with someone else or, or with or just or just by myself. But yeah, so him and I did a, like a like an EP around 2007 or 2008. That might have been like the next like real project that we had and we like went actually on like a tour at that time so that was kind of cool oh cool yeah yeah we just like booked it with like people we knew or people we like reached out to and i never done a tour before and i was really excited to do that so i'm we, still like, really excited to do that I, that's one of the things i like i want to get checked off my list for sure oh, yeah, yeah for sure like just yeah i mean definitely just do it just you know whatever 
contacts and people you can reach out to and stuff like that and like take you know vacation time or time off like you know mm -hmm. this i was like working i think i went to northampton community college and then mm -hmm. like got a coffee shop in bethlehem called wired that was like on main street mm -hmm. for a years yep. yeah mm -hmm. and i think like winter break time we we're like okay let's do this so we did like a winter like a new year's eve show at my friend ken's house um and then we like booked the show in new york city at this club that i think it's still doing shoot shows called pianos we went up to like my friends who live in buffalo we played like a house show it was like really packed and lots of fun oh that's awesome we went down to pittsburgh where my friend tim had like a friend that like moved out there to convert um cars to run on vegetable oil and he had, oh. You know, this huge <laughs> factory that he bought for like basically nothing. And he was hosting shows on the side because he played in bands too in the Lehigh Valley. So it was like, you know, um, cool to kind of connect there. And then we went out to Indianapolis where um, I met like someone previously who had come through the Lehigh Valley on a like a tour. So that was cool. We played there. We went to Chicago where I met someone, I think, on couch surfing, I think, at the time that was just like, you know, looking to do cool creative art stuff. So that was fun. And then, like, uh, we went down to Tennessee, where I like played with, in a cafe with friends I'd met in Canada when I do, when I was doing this French immersion program. And then we ended the tour, I think, I think in Allen, yeah, back in Allentown, where we played Jan's Room, which was like this old, like DIY space that was there. That's now, I think, the alternative gallery building, cigar factory building. I think mm -hmm. it was in that building, but but it was not like renovated or anything. And I don't mm -hmm. think it was, like. I don't know how up to code it was, how people would watch shows there. <laughs> it was like basically an abandoned building. Yeah. Um, so we did a show there, I think, too. So that was that was fun to kind of like piece all this like thing, this this whole thing together at that time. So that yeah, I would definitely write. I haven't done like, I've done like small tours, I guess, at you know here and here and there, like around that same time, but nothing like nothing since then, since like two thousand eight or two thousand nine. Um, although Raid keeps playing shows out in Central PA, so I always feel like we're, when we go out there, we're kind of like on tour. It's like we just played York last week, so it's always like when you see signs for Baltimore, you're kind of like getting out there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. I love Central PA. I feel like they're really kind of, their scene is really kind of picking up from what I can tell anyway. Um, for yeah. sure. Yeah, we've yeah. made a lot of great connections with like uh, really cool folks that are doing some awesome stuff out that way. So, yeah, definitely it's it's a cool scene. Yeah. Um, since we're on that subject, um, uh, I know community is big and important for you as well as it should be for any person, let alone, uh, you know, regional or local band. Um, and, you know, you just talked about all the connections you made and you were able to put a tour together with that. Like, um, is that something, are you like a people person naturally or how does that come about? Is it all through music connections mm -hmm. or is it? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I for sure like probably wouldn't call myself a people person, but after yeah. just like telling that story, it's like, oh yeah, I kind of, <laughs> like made all these connections like through people. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, like you know, I'm not like a, I'm not like an extroverted, outgoing, like you know, like work the room type of person. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like I don't know. I just connect with people and like you know, the way that makes sense to me or the or or you know, to ever like you know, uh, I'm communicating with in a way, you know, and if it like kind of kind of happens, it happens, you know. So. Mm -hmm. um i don't know i guess we all have to be people 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 i guess <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah you know, way we're working in the world in a way and then work together on different things so um yeah i wouldn't call myself a people person but i guess you know i guess i probably am yeah uh, i'm the same it's a skill i feel like i've had to learn and work really hard on it's not something mm -hmm. that just comes naturally for me so um, yeah, it's just interesting to hear um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. Oh, man, there's so many different ways we can go here. Um, okay, S sticking with the community and the people stuff. Um, actually, let's go to your bands first. Um, how did, like, Fictional Name and Raid start? So I lived um, before, so I lived in Pennsylvania until, like, you know, I finished college and, and actually grad school as well. And then I studied, like, you know, um, international education and I was like, you know, working with international students and programs like that. And I applied for a grant to go teach and live and uh, research in Turkey for a couple of years. So oh, I did that awesome. probably 2012 to 2014. That's where I met my partner, Mickey. And so we were doing the same program. And then 
Um, I did that for about two years and figured I can like, keep living abroad or maybe come back, you know, to the States to kind of like be closer to home because like my parents are a bit older. And so I thought like it'd be good to be, you know, closer to them and also just family in general, I guess, like, the, you know, the, the like, I have two brothers in the States and like one in Canada. So, you know, it's good to kind of keep in touch and, and, and be closer when you can. So I was able to find a, a cool position in New Hampshire uh, when I came back at a, at a school there and, and worked um, with like international uh, exchange programs and study abroad and, and things like that. So I did that for like, I guess three years. And then eventually it was like, oh, I guess, you know, this, this position opened up and I work at Muhlenberg College in Allentown. So I moved there probably around 2017, yeah. And then, um, I don't know. I was just kind of like retracing my old stomping grounds at that point and just kind of like seeing what was out and what was like there. And um, at the time, my friend um, Daniel, who I now play with in Raid, he was kind of uh, finishing up a degree, I think, at Muhlenberg. So we just ran into each other like we'd been in it. You know, we'd always see each other and catch up and stuff like that. So I, I you know, we were catching up and. He had mentioned that, uh, and he's always been doing music projects. Like he never really fully stopped like doing music projects because um, he was in lots of bands. We were in, like we went to the same high school together. We weren't like super close in high school, but we just knew knew of each other and knew of each other's bands and stuff like that. So like later years, we were just like you know we connect and catch up and stuff like that. And um, and he was still doing music stuff. I was like super impressed and like excited that like you know that was like really inspiring. And he had mentioned. Um, that the library was opening up a studio like it hadn't really been opened yet and like i had always been doing music like i never stopped doing music what i really was doing was just like this thing called the rpm challenge which is called record production month it's like try to oh, yeah try to record an album in the month of february so that yeah. was like my time where i always focused on like just like working on music stuff because that was like a a thing that like a handful of people were, were doing as well so it was just sort of like you know what i did like through the years I was living in New Hampshire primarily, because I think it started in New Hampshire. I think now it's based in Canada. But anyways, I was like back in Pennsylvania and not really really connected with too many different folks because a lot of folks that I knew were either, you know, had moved away or I hadn't really connected with too many other people. But in any case, I was working on these songs for that project and um, called up the library and I was like, hey, um, I heard you had a drum set. Can I? <laughs> I think you're letting people just record there. So I think I talked to Josh, and I think he jokes that it was like, uh, what do you say? Oh, he saw that like my call, my call was from like Muhlenberg, and he's like, all right, well, he's from a college, so maybe he's not like a crazy person that's gonna come in. <laughs> Anyways, and then you like, yeah. So I, you know, worked in there, and then our friend, uh, or our friend now, but like at the time, he was a volunteer at the library, helping people get like acclimated to the studio. He just finished like a recording degree. I think at LTRC and that's like our now drummer, Sam. And so he helped me like record drums. And I was like, well, you play drums. You could probably do this a lot better than I do. Cause I really don't know how to play drums. And so like, he's like, really? I'll hop on it. And so he helped me finish like either recording and or playing these drum takes on this, like, you know, dem like this, these, these songs I was working on, I'm trying to demo or record for this project. And then Josh kind of like jokes that he came in and says he like, Hey, I play bass. And, <laughs> but he says he never knew how to play bass, doesn't play bass or whatever. <laughs> so, in any case, it was just cool to like be with people that were like interested in like jamming and playing music. So that's how Fictional Name basically started was when Studio 11 started mm -hmm. at the same time. So that was like kind of exciting to like, you know, be a part of that and, and see that kind of start off from that where, what it is then and, and hear about all the other people that use that studio for free just a free recording studio in the Bethlehem library. So any folks that want to do that or record there or use it, like it's definitely there. So, and then we just started working on songs together and that's, yeah, that was like fictional names, basically starting point. We've added a couple members since then. My friend Audrey um, has a daughter, Karis, and she's like a really awesome singer and musician. Mm -hmm. too. She finished like her high school years that we have, they have Valley Art, Charter Art School. And like she joined us for one of the uh, 11 fests and um and now you know joins us when she can she's in college now but she's you know a great songwriter and great singer and then our friend brian who's i think on the chat he i think mm -hmm. lives near josh and they have like you know you know kids i think they're at the same sports and stuff so i think they met that way but brian's a really good guitar player and so he'll join us when he can too um so yeah so it kind of kind of grew that way for and then we just kind of make you know find all these weird shows to play in different places <laughs> and, you know when we can so um and yeah, then Ray, go, go ahead, ahead. Go ahead. Uh -huh. 
I was just going to shout out Josh and Matt and everyone involved in Studio 11. I thought it was great. Mm -hmm. We recorded some vocals there um, at one point, and it was awesome. I just want to quick shout out Quinner's, Quinner's Draws Things mm -hmm. and Our Bodies Themselves for joining on Instagram. We appreciate you jumping on here. And yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Well, then Raid, Raid was like a project that, um, again, Daniel and his brother had started. I don't know if it was before the pandemic or during the pandemic. It was just a two-piece project. And they both played in a band in high school, again, in Nazareth. So they were kind of re, I don't know, reigniting maybe a collaboration together as brothers and working on this project. And then they were, I think they had a show that was going to be happening around when the pandemic started, but I don't, I think it may have, may have got canceled. And then later on, I think when Studio 11 was doing 11 Fest, like, you know, I'll help Josh, like, look for bands maybe to, like, maybe potentially play. And I uh, reached out to them if they wanted to play 11 Fest, but it was, like, the online version. And so it was, like, going to be, like, live streamed or recorded. Um, and then they were, I don't know, I guess the same, the, the guitar player they were working with, they weren't working with anymore. And um, so I just said, well, okay, well, if you need a guitar player, I'll try to do a few of the songs, at least for this show. If you want, if you want to play, so we did that for the like I think it must have been the 2020 11 Fest, and then um, later on they switched it up because at that time Daniel was playing drums and Rob's the bass player, but he was playing Daniel was playing drums and singing. Then he switched to guitar when they found like another drummer who's the Raid drummer now, Dan Polacek, and then they did like a three piece version for at least a year or two. Um, and then Daniel ended up moving away for a bit, and Rob had asked me if I wanted to hop back on guitar. So I was like, yeah, sure. And so we did that for about a year, and uh, it's a three-piece again, but this time with like Rob playing bass and singing, and I was just you know the guitar player and Dan on drums. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then Daniel moved back from D.C., and um, he rejoined all his guitar and, as, and vocals too. So then we're a four-piece, and we've been a four-piece since then. So that was kind of the, I don't know, connection with Raid. That's how I joined, at least. But... Um, I was really happy because I never been in a band before where I'm like just the guitar person mm. just playing guitar. So that was really cool and exciting for me to sort of think about just the music piece a lot more and the guitar playing piece a lot more in that, in that way. Yeah. I want to uh, touch on that a little bit, actually, just really quickly. want to pop this up. Um, tape soft radio says, what's up, Tom? <laughs> so thank you for, uh, Hey Matt, Hey Seamus, whoever, whoever, I guess. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. We appreciate you jumping on and, uh, sharing that so thank you um yeah so i want to get into songwriting and all that stuff you just hit on a bunch of things right there i was furiously taking notes here mm. um how about three piece versus four piece um yeah i just can you talk a little bit about that and the differences there and mm. how you approach how you approach one versus the other <laughs> yeah that's good we've, we've had a bunch of conversations about this too uh i don't know i think um what are you talking about four piece like two guitars basically sure yeah um or like yeah i guess it could or it could be uh guitar bass vocals drums either way yeah gotcha yeah okay i don't know i mean um well in that configuration like i think that's kind of like probably the most freeing because you have everyone kind of focusing on what they're doing you know mm -hmm. have um you know, guitar and bass, and then your vocalist who isn't necessarily doing a different instrument. They could all like really focus on those elements and bring them together in pretty cool ways. Um, and that's kind of what we're doing right now because we're kind of trying out this sort of new fit configuration with just the guitar, bass, and vocals, sort of like, you know, all you know, like connect, like separate but connected mm -hmm. that way. And, um, and then with two guitars, yeah, I mean, that's. Um, I don't know. I, I always like you know the the loud like the loudness of two guitars or like the, you know combining two different. Like I really like the band Television where they're having mm -hmm. like intricate like guitar things that work, mm -hmm. or like just the feeling of like two two amps going at the same time, you know, and everyone kind of like in, interlocked in that way. So I don't know, but you can get that also with like a three piece too, like a really like a big sound as well. I hadn't really thought about the differences between like three piece or four piece in that way, I guess. I don't know. I always kind of think about like what the song, what the songs are at and how they're kind of hitting, um, how they're kind of sounding in that way. Um, you know, what, 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 how people are kind of using what they have, I guess. I don't know. That's a good question. I'm going to think about that more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, it sounds like you're similar to me where you're kind of approaching it's like okay what does this song need what is my role in this song and um, 
uh, yeah, I, I uh, was lucky enough to find um, our guitar player Shane, who's mm. very plays very similar, uh, not in like style wise, but like he's a very good listener first. So he'll he won't just try to throw something out there necessarily. He'll take it in, kind of figure out his part, and then work yeah. work you know together like that. And I think that's a that's a big part of it too. Actually, this was another question I had before. It, uh, what do you what do you look for in band members, or is it just something of like ah, oh, just find these people and just just um, go for it, or are, are there specific things that you're looking for um, when you're either joining a band or, or bringing someone new into the to the fold? Mm. I don't. Yeah, that's that's another good question. I don't know. I guess like if we like work well or compatible on like a musical level, and also like a personal level too. I think that makes a lot of like sense also like it's important i guess if you get along with somebody <laughs> i don't know um and Especially if they on tour yeah. <laughs> yeah they get along with you you know i think um you know with a uh, fictional name i think like we've kind of have like a more kind of like i wouldn't say like lax but we're kind of like, easy going because like you know we have a singer that's in college and she's you know coming and going when she's on breaks and stuff and like our mm -hmm. The guitar player, he's a pilot, so he's also kind of away sometimes, like, you know, That's different right, trips, yeah. things like that. Um, and, you know, but I think we all, like, get along really well and, you know, kind of, like, are, like, you know, fans of music and, you know, putting things together. Um, like, our drummer, like, he always jokes that he's never really, like... We always ask, like, do you want to do a drum solo, Sam? Or do you want to do something that's, like, you know... And he's like, I feel like every song I'm playing is a drum solo because it's, like... <laughs> I'm always coming up with something slightly different or just feeling it at the at the moment like he's very like in tune with that and that's like super exciting to hear like someone who's just kind of like you don't think he even like has a drum set right now he's always kind of like using lots of like pieces of the drums like that josh josh will have or we play shows i think he always is the one who just brings like a snare and some other pieces too like so yeah he just has this like energy i guess about like how he does it and like same with Josh too, when he like plays the bass, like he's always just like, I think feeling out where he's at with it. And he's coming up with like such like interesting, like unique bass lines that are really like, you know, not like a very, it's a very atypical bass style, I think in, in my opinion, <laughs> that he's just like developing the, and it's always slightly different too. So we always kind of have these like odd, like things that are slightly changing with that, with, with fictional name. And I think that's really exciting to me. And like we'll each like you know I like me and Josh are like work on a lot of songs and Karis brings a lot of the songs too that like are, have like a at least a somewhat somewhat semi structured elements put together either like chords or lyrics or whatever and then like you know and it's cool to see Brian and and Sam add their pieces and Sam and or sorry uh, Brian's like a you know really talented guitar player mm -hmm. that adds a lot of cool like like flavor to it but um, so I'd say it's a kind of like this like loose kind of sound that we have developed. And that's super exciting. So it's cool to see that. And then like in Raid, like also they're like really cool people too. And it's great to like hang out and get to know folks and um, see like, it's a different, definitely a different sound. It's like super atonal. It's like controlled chaos. It's super <laughs> loud. It's got like this high energy. And so I think like we really like hone in on that. And I think it's, I don't know, for me, that's like really cool because it's like, I couldn't really imagine being in a super loud band that's like super loose. I just feel like that would just be <laughs> really, really chaotic. I mean, yeah, you know, I don't think you could do it all the time, but like with Raid, I guess we really focus in on like this, these song structures that have like these specific things and like we are really honing in on like, I don't know, this, this, this controlled chaos is the only way I can really describe it in the, in that way. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's been super exciting. Cause like, I don't know, I didn't really think about, before, like, I don't know, the years when I did, like, you know, Shrew and Holly of Jambus, and there's a couple other projects, you know, I was a part of, too, but I didn't really think about, like, music, live music in a way that was, like, you know, having this, like, this life, and then it was when I went back with my friend Tim again, like, who was from Holly of Jambus, like, he played in loud bands uh, in high, uh, in back, you know, in Lehigh Valley, and, like, we I was visiting him and he was going to see this like super loud band that he had like that he played with when he was in a band and we went to go see them play in New York and it was like you know um these like I don't know tall stacks of marshals and this like super 
loud noisy band it was, you know it was playing like i guess their last show it was like this you know sort of like tour thing so like so and there was you know these folks that were there to see it was like i don't know it wasn't even like a ton of folks it was just a handful of folks but they're just playing this super loud music and i was just like blown away by like how the amps and the loudness of this like energy was like conveying across this room of people and i was like there's absolutely no way you can like can like capture this on a recording or wherever, because you're always going to play it back on headphones or a, a phone, phone uh, speakers or wherever you are. Like, this is never going to like exist again. And I was just like was fascinated from that moment. I was, and that was even that long ago. That was only like, I don't know, seven or eight years ago, I guess. Oh like, wow! It's like blown away. And I, you know, I played in a lot of band in high school. But I never thought about it in that way, where like it exists in this moment, and then it's gone. And it's just like you know, I, and it was, and it was just like you know. So I thought about that for a long time, even if I was like not necessarily thinking about being in a loud band again. So it was like super exciting to join Raid and be like, oh, I'm like in a loud band and like this is like only happening at these moments, you know, when it happens and like, you know, thinking about like, I don't know, that like element to it all of like, you know, live music. And then I just thought about thinking about live music in general in that way too, even like, you know, corner, like, you know, not, not as loud music, just like, you know, especially being part of the Ice House punky DIY shows and just seeing so many great bands and musicians come through the, that stage and seeing how they convey their art and their songs and their style and all these different genres that we've hosted. It's been like super like cool to like just experience that piece of it, even just as someone who's like help, like an organizer that's helping it, you know, just kind of like just just being in awe of all the talent that's like here and just like I don't know, seeing how the Lehigh Valley scene like even like is like super active right now and, and connecting with some different folks. Um, so, yeah, I forgot what your initial question. No, that's perfect. <laughs> you made a whole bunch of cool segues there. So <laughs> hold on one sec. I just want to shout out uh, my initials spell mad and trickery official. Thank you both for joining. Uh, if you have questions for Tom at any point, you can drop them in the comments. And oh, we do have one here. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. HT Shell says, "Nice to listen oh. in. I'll have to catch the rest when it's archived." Thanks for hosting. Thank you oh. for your comment and for jumping in there. That's that's Herbie. Herbie runs this uh, booking agency called Love's Devotee, and I think they have a show tomorrow night with uh, a noise rock or noise. I guess noise band Wolf Eyes. But he I think I just found him yeah i just yeah. found him he's somebody i also knew like way back when when i was like you know kind of in, in the sort of lehigh valley scene and he was in a you know different bands and hosting bands and it was really a, you know a big influence of mine in high school at least like towards the end of high school anyway i was like listening to like mount erie and microphones music and like um one of the bands that's like connected to that was thanksgiving and i think herbie hosted a show at the uh, ilks mill like park in bethlehem with mm -hmm. thanksgiving tour and i just remember him like you know it's just like eight of us or nine of us i think herbie played and then the the guy who is calls himself thanksgiving i think his real name is adrian we went out and he's like let's go out in these like beautiful woods and just follow me so we just followed this guy with his guitar out into the woods it's like eight of us just like standing around him and he's playing his songs and one at one point he's like okay this next song i need i need you all to like rub your hands like this to <laughs> To make so we're like nine of us were rubbing our hands <laughs> in the woods so this guy is playing this like you know really like cool indie like folk folky song so shout out to herbie for setting that up like 2002 or whatever it was <laughs> yeah awesome and thank you for uh jumping in and contributing today much appreciated uh let's since you brought up the ice house um yeah can you just talk about how you got involved in that and um just give people a little bit of backstory on that because they're you really doing some great stuff there. I, this, uh, the networking events, the shows, all that kind of stuff is really bringing everyone together. Yeah, I guess, um, I can't remember what, I think it was, must've been two or two and a half years ago now. I guess I was just like curious, like if Ice House was like still doing shows and I had played the Ice House once when I was in True with, um, you know, a guy had set up a show there and was like looking for bands to like play. And that was like a long time ago. So like I knew they had done shows in the past and um, and I'd seen like all the cool stuff like Tape Swap had done. And that was like probably like the years like, you know, like 2010 to 15 or 16 or whenever it was. I can't remember exactly. I was gone for a lot of those years. And then obviously like, you know, um, pandemic had happened and I think it was like slowly coming out so I just like you know went on the city's website and emailed um, the email that was there 
and just uh, like asked like, hey, like, you know, just curious if you ever do shows, what's the process like? And like, you know, happy to play or help support whatever's going on there if possible. And um, the guy wrote back, his name's Doug. And he's like, we're doing a meeting tomorrow if you want to just join. And I was like, okay. And so, you know, there was like, I don't know, eight or nine other people who all, I guess had the same idea. Like, hey, we're all in bands or we all like, care about music. And we just like are excited to use this like cool community space and we just ha started having these meetings with like various people at the time that was like you know um interested you know and um i think we had started a uh um i was like an online i forget the name it was one of the it wasn't like it's like one of the chat groups um it was twitch maybe or i can't remember it was like a chat group thing and we had like this large group with like 20 or 30 people at one point who were all kind of like, you know, trying to help out in small different ways. And it was becoming a lot like, you know, it was cool to have like see so much, but I think Doug, who's like part, you know, sort of does it as like a, a labor of love, but also is like connected to the city on like different committees and stuff and has been doing arts there for like several years. Like he's a marionette artist, I guess. And, oh, and, cool. and stuff. So, um, and has helped out and just is really passionate about like doing different arts things. Um, you know, in, in the ice house. So you just like asked like, you know, who like the five or six like different like people um, that want to like uh, keep it going. So we kind of like whittled it down to like five of us. So that'd be like me and Mel, Ryan, Seamus and Leo who are like sort of like the core group that like help piece together things. And we like, you know, just try to streamline it at least in, in a way that makes like, you know, more efficient sense. So we can just do one, like one show a month and um, mm -hmm. kind of how it started in that in that way. And um, we're trying to just keep it as organized as we could, like knowing that these things, like, I don't know, has anything with arts and music and stuff, like and people come and go, and, and especially the bands too. Uh, you know, the sort of the life of a band is super exciting to me in ways, because it's like, you know, sometimes they last a long time, sometimes they don't last very long at all. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that's that leaves like this exciting piece to sort of like, you know, see, see, see some of those transitions as, and we've seen it already even just in the few years I, you know, we've been doing it. So, and then, um, yeah, in addition to those folks, we have, uh, another guy named Joe Raz who helps uh, volunteer, like with, like, you know, doing sound for a lot of the shows. Like he like studied, you know, live sound and recording at, at Berkeley college of music. So he'll come out and support us just by like being there and like, you know, working the boards and he gets super excited about it too. So it's exciting to like see, different folks like come and do like, you know, you know, use their passions and be a part of it in a way and sort of like, you know, it's a super like collaborative like endeavor. And uh, yeah, that's kind of how it came together, I guess. And it's an awesome venue with a really cool stage. Just a great experience. So yeah. And cool. like, yeah, and definitely like, um, we got to shout out like Matt from like Shard Studio. Oh, like, no doubt. He does so much like work behind the scenes. And he, like, <laughs> helped write grants for the city to, or at least convince the city to like invest in sound equipment. And he has like contacts from all the connections he has through his studio and doing recording stuff. And was, I guess like Tascam sponsored a bunch of re recording boards. So mm -hmm. it's just like cool to kind of see like different people helping out in that way. And like, yeah, it's just really like inspiring, I guess. And like, you know, um, so we're all just trying to do that, I guess. Yeah, very cool. Uh, I just really want to quickly want to shout out uh, Mark Mark Camaro. Sorry if I butchered your name. Thank you for joining. Um, and let's see what else here. So, uh, what I guess what is your opinion? Uh, there's there's a couple of different things I want to go here. I, just really quickly, I want to get back to songwriting because I don't think we really touched on your songwriting necessarily. You said it was something you always do. And then once you kind of got the the vibe of the live thing, did that change your songwriting at all? Like, we, you know, you went out to see that loud band and you were talking about capturing yeah. a moment in time. Did that change how you thought about songwriting? And, and um, Yeah. Yeah, that loud band was called Fight Amputation. I remember. Okay. And now they're, I think they started a new band called Rid of Me. They're still like doing music stuff, but. Cool. Um, I don't know if it changed my songwriting, like, but I do think about like, I was thinking about this earlier, like, I don't know, like songs are like little worlds in some mm -hmm. way, like create these spaces where either thoughts or ideas exist. And I don't know, they're always interpreted differently, like depending on who listens to them. So that's my favorite part. <laughs> I always tell people like, I'm not going to tell you what the song is about. It, yeah. your present, your gift back to the songwriter is to tell 
the songwriter what you think it's about because it was always way more interesting I, I find yeah yeah for sure I love hearing that too I also just love like I don't know I love making things that are like hitting me in a way that's like I don't know there's not even a word to describe it I guess like I don't know like how you have like different words that like that exist in different languages like yeah. try tried in Freud in German German doesn't really yep. exist English, you know I don't know I feel like that with songwriting I feel like there are certain things that are happening that I necessarily like you know can't like really describe but like I'm just gonna follow this energy in a way and sometimes I'll work on a song for a day be like super like inspired by it or feeling like this is something that's like really like hard hitting or at least to me and the next day it's like oh yeah I don't know where I was going with that but then I'll listen to it again six months from now. I was like, that was like the most brilliant thing I've ever come up with. <laughs> or like two years, you know, whatever it is. And like mm -hmm. having the distance from it. I think with live bands, it's been a lot different. Like playing music live. This is the most music I've ever played live in my life. Being in two bands and um, playing in lots of different songs that we've worked on. And I guess like, you know, the takeaway is like, how does the song feel after you've played it like X number of times and like X number of places? And that's also a different feeling too because i feel like you know it's going to live in a different way in your mind when you've played it so many times you know and like for a fictional name we've been playing songs like that we've wrote like even before the pandemic like five years now right so this is just like really like tacked on this like element of like time and space but also repetition too and i never really had the repetition part because i was i was always writing stuff and thinking about stuff but never really, not necessarily like finishing stuff that's always like my like my that's my like hardest thing to do mm -hmm. like finish things and so same with songwriting as well. So when I was like not in a band and not really performing, I was always just working on ideas and never really finishing those ideas. But being in bands, it's been like, you know, more or less like trying to finish those ideas, try to bring them to like a, a live performing level and then trying to see if they all sustain the life. Like there's some songs I'll like tell, at least fictional name, because we've been playing longer. Like there's some songs I really can't play anymore. And, I know in Raid, we've had the similar conversations too, like, because they've been playing a lot of the same songs too for a long time. And so, yeah, I think like it's kind of interesting to see the life cycle of a song and then writing new songs to see how they might take a new shape. And, you know, I don't know. So that's like the sort of songwriting piece with like the live element involved. And I guess with like songwriting as like a whole, like, I'm really interested about like things that are like, I don't know connections with humans and the, you know, the world that we live in, I guess, or at least the world that uh, that, me, that means something to me. Like I was thinking about, I always think about like, cause um, you know, people really like the bands like Fish and like Grateful Dead, you know? And I was thinking about that and like how they're like, the songs and those bands that like, create like these whole worlds and people kind of have this like, almost like cultural center around it. And I find yeah. that kind of interesting too. And like, I went to like a Fish concert a couple of years ago with, with Josh and our friend Matt. Um, and you know just like and matt is a really big fish fan he's explaining like all like the culture behind it like there's this ebb and flow or this like you know this this this, this pull in and release and like you know mm -hmm. fans will bring glow sticks and like throw them up when like a huge like crescendo happens with the music but they just kind of feel it all together and so like stuff like that is kind of exciting but i don't know i don't think about music or songs in that way necessarily where i'm creating huge worlds and like for me that was sort of like you know, that's like a huge, like long-term, like life project and de endeavorment of someone creating that type of work. And then also people following it in a way that's like, you know, super, like super fandom. And, um, but I appreciate like, you know, experiencing all these different things too. So, you know, it was like, but it, for me, it was almost like, you know, kind of like seeing like a Star Wars or Star Trek type like fandom yep. of like people knowing all the ins and outs of these <laughs> things, you know? So Yeah. I feel like um, uh, Frank Zappa was very much like that too, where people get yeah. like, sucked into his the world that he kind of created as well. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so this, you brought up an interesting point about playing the repetition of playing songs. So uh, I've recently experienced this, like I, I had this song that was just forever ago. I like came up with and we, brought it into the band and worked it up. And I was kind of like, ah, this will be one we can just get out quick and write some new songs to replace it. But then as you play it in front of people, people are like, oh, I love that song. And it's like, it kind of breathes new life into it. And then it kind of like, really this one? What, what is the difference between this one and the ones that like I currently think are more interesting and that kind of stuff. Mm. So that's always kind of interesting to get feedback from people and it kind of becomes like it's a, once once you release something it's not yours anymore it's it's 
whoever's listening to it and they yeah kind of have a say in it too so that does that, that i do take that in consideration um so yeah it's just made me uh think of that when you said that yeah it's always exciting when folks are giving you that type of feedback you know mm -hmm. or any feedback really <laughs> yeah really <laughs> <laughs> i mean you know even if it's like hey like that wasn't like super hard hitting or, or that was da, 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 so whatever but i mean like even if but if they like it that's even really that's that also i don't know folks are listening to your music i think that's yes. super exciting yeah i will gladly take either <laughs> <laughs> it's the ambivalence that's it's hard right <laughs> yeah um okay well that takes us to just about an hour so um thank you so much for um being on with me and you just want to plug all the stuff you have coming up one more time just so everyone knows where they can um see yeah. at. I, Sure. I'll work backwards, I guess. So <laughs> July 19th, fictional name as a show at Elmwood Park in Bethlehem with the Northside Alive, um, you know, nonprofit organization. And uh, also May 11th, we're doing the 5K Rock and Run at Coca-Cola Park. Um, for Ice House, uh, we have two shows. This April show is coming up um, on 426 with my band raid and also purple lung super cool like slow doom yeah. style metal band I'll definitely be at that one yeah and iridescence yeah and uh, iridescence who's this cool like psych kind of garage rock mm -hmm. of also like hardcore band it, they have a lot of different things going on there uh, we caught them at the drums. red room um Nuremberg, yeah oh yeah yeah they mm -hmm. played a fictional name uh, mm -hmm. yeah they're so they're super exciting and then raids also got a show in may with uh, a really really cool like i don't know it's like noisy also noisy post-punk band called pyrex mm -hmm. and they have like a really really cool sound definitely check them out and our drummer in, in raid uh, dan his other band ailment from philadelphia is going to come up and they're like a crust band he mm -hmm. calls it and i listen to a bunch of crust bands and i'm like it's not really punk and it's not really metal yeah. it's like somewhere in between and that's yep. super exciting too um and then raid is opening for wipes this coming weekend at uh king coffee on saturday 4 20 with our friends uh, in trickery as well so our friends in wipes and trickery so and then this other show that i've just you know i never said i never called myself a booking person but i was like oh this guy is david Nondero. i really like his music a lot uh he's wrote some really powerful songs he's just a singer songwriter guy and He's been on NPR, like, you know, Tiny Desk Concerts. Ooh. Done lots of cool stuff. He lots of cool music. And really also, like, I don't know, political and open-minded, like, to, like, this world that we could could live in and just thinking about all these different things. You know, he's the songs about, like, like, hitchhiking and songs about, I don't know, just, like, various various topics. Also, I think Bright Eyes copied his singing style. So if you like Bright Eyes, <laughs> then David Dondero is, like, the OG, I think. Nice. <laughs> Bright Eyes, like, type singer. Um, even though everyone thinks David Nondero copied Bright Eyes because Bright Eyes you know, is really famous. But anyways, yeah. David Nondero was playing there with my friend Alex and Seal Cloth. Um, and we, we actually played a project together in between some of those other things. And the funny story behind him is I used, at that Wired Cafe I worked at, he was, uh, me and my other friend who worked at that cafe would just do like music after we were done working. This in the back room, just like experimental stuff with all these like different like pedals and amps. And he just walked in and we forgot to lock the door and he just walked in and sat on a couch listening to us for like, I don't know, half hour, an hour or whatever it was. And we realized someone was sitting there. He's like, that was really cool. <laughs> so uh, that, that was how I met Alex. And he, yeah, he, cool. he was a student at Moravian and he's now he's like doing really cool music projects all the time. And one of them is called Sailcloth. So he'll be helping out, supporting that. David Andero, May 10th at the other side and slash Escondalo on 4th Street in Bethlehem. Awesome. Um, uh, Trickery, thank you for jumping in there. Um, and Mark, thank you for jumping in there and commenting on Instagram as well. Tom, thank you so much uh, for uh, spending some time with me today and just going through. I feel like we could do like two or three of these. So you're welcome <laughs> to come back anytime you want. Okay. Um, Always and, happy. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for being on and thank everyone for um, jumping on and, and listening and posting. And we appreciate yeah. it. And um, I can't remember who's on next week, but <laughs> oh. tune in, uh, check it out. And definitely, you have so many good lineups coming up. So definitely um, yeah. check out one of yeah. uh, or more of Tom's uh, projects coming up. So Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we also have a May Ice yeah. House show that's coming up, May 24th, Sun God and Darian Con. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. So that'll be in the end of May. So another great one. Yeah. But thank you, Mike, for hosting this platform and like, I don't know, just having another place for people to talk about it and network. It was cool connecting with you at the networking event the other last month and being able yes. to like, you want to hop on? Sure. Like that's like that's a cool organic thing you're doing. I hope, yeah. I hope you get folks to do it. And like, yeah. Oh, my pleasure. Really. It's been a, such a good, um, just a good way to get to know people. So I really do appreciate you coming on. I'll just throw one more up here. Uh, Daryl Fogel says, awesome. See you oh, Saturday cool. time. Yeah. Daryl, he's a good guy. Cool. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, and we'll see you next week and hopefully at a show soon. Um, yeah. Take it easy, everyone.